This week's episode is epic. You have to watch it right to the end. Right, we, we spotted the uh, whale. You ready? Yeah, three. You need to get up in the air quickly. Ah, oh, it's one of those walks again. Whoo, it's hot, really hot and really steep. But you know, you do it for the views <laughs> and the view is amazing. Okay, this is the coconut liqueur, 20%. <laughs> How to get free alcohol. Wow. So today Orenka's taken the uh, the boys off to the park to uh, play with some friends and uh, it means I've got the opportunity to uh, get on with a little bit of uh, maintenance. Uh, the maintenance list is always a long one. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me we're family sing home obvious jobs that they do doing like uh, i need to uh, put an alternating protector on the alternator but there's other things crop up in the meantime so i'm going to try and take these screws out and see if i can get this out and if i can i might be able to get a replacement so i'm trying to uh, fix the furler again this has been in my nemesis this uh, furler uh, I think there hasn't been a part that I haven't replaced or fixed. We took the gas bottles to the petrol station down the road to get filled up with gas and they were returned because they said they were too rusty. I'm just basically sanding off the, <laughs> sanding off the rust, putting a little bit of uh, uh, rust inhibitor on there, then I'll give it a sand down and a, a respray and then we can get our gas bottles filled and then move on to the next job. Tahiti has a huge market that sells fruits, veg, meat, fish and also local handicrafts and arts. We even managed to get a quick game of squash in and some coaching from the Polynesian coach Cedric Hato. So Monday morning's come around again and uh, I've got to go into town to pick up some uh, parts to uh, install this um, alternator regulator but uh, we've had a good weekend. It's funny we've been here for so long now uh, quite a few weeks and uh, we've already started building up a little community around ourselves. Inspired by our friends on Sunday Waffles, we've actually finally uh, bought a waffle maker uh, which Darry's been asking for for months and uh, he's becoming an expert at making waffles now. I'm becoming an expert in eating them as well. Um, Tahiti is quite famous for its food vans. We also had some good Tahitian food. So we've checked out the local bar, which is uh, in the marina. And they've got a happy hour between five and six. So uh, we started meeting up with some other parents there, and uh, we even had some back and uh, had a bit of a jam session and, uh, and a few pizzas. Terry got these violin out, and you got these ukulele out, and. Um, one of the, uh, the dads off the other boat is a fantastic musician, so uh, he kind of uh, led the way with the jam session with his guitar, and uh, yeah, it was a good night. Got the, uh, the bus into town and uh, found the, uh, the very large uh, DIY store, but uh, unfortunately half the stuff is out of stock. I mean, it's difficult in places like this, you know, the, the, there are supplies, but generally they're kind of like low on stock or completely out of stock, so you've just kind of got to make do. So, got the bus back. It's been a sort of about a three hour round trip. So, finally, we're uh, getting out of here. We've stagnated here for so long, like well over a month. Um, I think with Rowan leaving and my dad leaving, we kind of took the wind out of our sails a bit, and uh, it's very easy just to kind of vegetate in one place uh, and a lot of people do uh, but uh, after a, an awkward start this morning the autopilot wasn't working and the uh, regulator wasn't working on the alternator uh, but we managed to fix one not the other but we're gonna leave we're gonna leave anyway but first of all we need to fuel up the fuel dock is only open for a certain few hours and there's a, already a queue starting so we need to fuel up and get going to Maria which is going to take about three hours and uh, already we're about one o'clock So this is the duty free, and um, means we get about we get 16% off duty free. We are. Good teamwork. Yeah. 
So that's it, we're leaving Tahiti. Mixed feelings about the place, but not all it's made out to be in the brochures, but uh, still uh, some nice spots, some good provisioning, very expensive, but uh, glad to be moving on. Whales, we see whales. So we'd heard that there was uh, some humpback whales um, hanging out between Moria and Tahiti. We can actually see them just on the surface of the water, uh, about half a mile away. We're going for a walk to a viewpoint and we've got lunch as well. There's mum on the phone. I actually, I'm, I'm emailing my, messaging my mum trying to help out with Rowan in England, <laughs> sorting out problems. How's it going? Uh, it's one of those walks again. Ooh, it's hot, really hot and really steep. But you know, you do it for the views <laughs> and the view is amazing. So we just walked up like probably the steepest path I've ever done. So it's great being this high up because you can actually see the the coral reef that goes round and then where the anchorages is and how the reef actually protects the anchorage over there and uh, there's actually been some humpback whales spotted over there as well That's Oscar's view on things. Excellent. What does mum think? <laughs> wow, it looks like the feeling's mutual. <laughs> I think we have a unanimous one of those. <laughs> <laughs> These are mangoes and we like eating them at the end of the day as like a nice treat. Ooh! I've got the one yellow one. Oh, what is it? Really nice. Nice. Should I climb up the tree and go get a few? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Sure you can. I'm going to climb up the tree. Right. What is it? Um, this is star fruit. They're like one of my favourite types of fruit. It's too green. Mm. <laughs> Is it sweet enough then? Oh yes, please. Wait, wait, there's an onion. Let's go. Mm. You can try some with you. Is that good? Yeah. Need to have a rope on one. Mmm, nice. Mmm. Mm. They're good here. Mm. Star fruit is amazing. With coconuts, uh, you can eat them when they're brown. You can open them up and they have the really nice meat in them. Or you can uh, drink them while they're green. And I, I think the juice is actually really good. But you shouldn't drink too much of it because it's actually a natural laxative. Papaya. Yeah. This plant right here is papaya. And usually they're a very like bright orange, but now right now they're green so they're not really. But these are actually short for normal papayas, like usually. They, um, usually the papayas are really tall, like taller than most trees. But they've um, slowly bred them to be small like this, so you can pick them. Because originally only monkeys and birds could get them. Seeing a 
tiki underneath the water, which I'm actually quite excited about because we've seen a lot on land, but none in the water. Yeah, that was pretty cool actually. I mean, there's quite a few tikis down there, different shapes and sizes and images, and it's quite hard to find them, but when you do, I think it's worth snorkeling here. Uh, perfect day, really nice walk up to the, get amazing view, and then come snorkeling. What more could you want, really? Have you ever dreamt of a lifestyle like this? Well, here's some really exciting news for you. You can have access to comprehensive guidance crafted by us, Irenka and Woody, seasoned world cruisers, yachting instructors and parents. We've taught thousands of people how to sail, and as a cruising family, we've sailed tens of thousands of miles across the world's oceans. Now you can access that knowledge from our Patreon platform. So, if you want to shift your life from traditional school and work towards boat schooling, remote working, minimalist living, and a remarkable life experience, then find out how by visiting www.mothershipadrift.com or click on the links in the description below. See you out there. Our next mission was to try and find out how they made the Rotui juice that we see everywhere. And for that, we had to first find the factory. So today we're gonna go visit a fruit juice factory and we're gonna see how a fruit juice is made basically. Yeah, I hope I get to try some. So the usual story, um, the bus hasn't arrived yet. Uh, so we're going to start walking and hitching. Hitching. It's just for hitching. So no bus, but we did manage to get a lift from this amazing lady. She's lovely. It's like, uh... Nice, sitting in a car. It's so fast, that one. So yeah, that was pretty cool. We got a lift and the lady even came back to get the rest of us and she dropped us just at the end of the track leading up to this huge factory. It was big for these islands, uh, this juice making factory. I wonder if this factory supplies the juice for Tahiti only or if it like transports it worldwide maybe. Probably mostly for Tahiti and Maria. Yeah. And then the leftovers they just ship out. Yeah, to like the surrounding islands and like food formation. I won't, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't build all that just for Maria. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they made it for all the Pacific Islands. We're just coming up to the entrance here and it's not just juice, it's also rum. But it's a bit early for rum. So we have to wear these hats um, to make sure that we don't have any of our hair dropping into the juice, of course. You can see them bottling the juice over there, it's really cool. Okay, so you're looking at this map. So here you can see the two mixed tanks are uh, two there. And then you've got the pasteurizer, which is right here. Look, it says on there, pasteurizer. So this is the pasteurizer. And then the syrup room is all down here. And oh, look, over there, the, the um, channels right at the back are the, um, so go into the super creamer. Great, you can walk right through the top of it and you can see everything happening below and there's also a museum, we're gonna go and find out more. So this company offers five types of jobs, ranging from the processing of fruit, juice packaging, production and packaging of alcohol, confectionery, uh, research and development. Now it's going to the boxing area, we're gonna see it getting boxed. Currently the factory employs 60 farmers and their workers and about 200 people are actually involved in the Moria pineapple industry. 
So pineapple and grapefruit were the first fruits that they developed and then they started to develop papaya, soursop, guava, noni and also coconut. It's rum. They make some rum. And the reason, I, I find it really weird because it's like a juice factory is making rum. Okay, it's getting boxed. Look. Okay, there's a bit of an issue because the boxes aren't packing the juices correctly. So it's going quite well, but then the boxing machine started not working, and the entire production line has to stop now just for that one tiny problem. Boys, what do you think? It tastes very sweet and I really like it. orange juice, passion fruit, vanilla. Wow, amazing. I'm definitely tasting it. Okay, madam, next, coconut liqueur. Oh, 20% alcohol. Oh, wow. This is the coconut liqueur. 20%. <laughs> How to get free alcohol. Wow. I think my favourite is probably the tropical one that we just tried. You can taste the papaya. You can also taste like the passion fruit, but I think, I it's think very it's nice. Okay, lychee. Oh, lychee. Oh, interesting. Lychee. I think I think the passion fruit definitely takes over the taste. But then you have an aftertaste of like smoky flavour from the papaya. So actually this company is the largest industrial employer of Maria and is the leader of the Polynesian fruit juice market. Oh that's really nice. Mm, yeah. Okay, this is Maria and there's a lot of um, humpback whales that tend to go around near the reef. We've got up early this morning to go as near as we can without disturbing them because we want to get, you know, a nice glimpse. Should we just row over? Uh, yeah, so we came over here and we uh, just heard another blow and yeah, we're really excited. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. See what happens. We, we spotted the uh, whale. You ready? Yeah, three. You need to get up in the air quickly. This recovery method we have never tried before. It basically involves catching the drone mid-flight on a moving dinghy. My dad has to quickly turn it upside down to make the gyroscopes turn the propellers off.
switcher. We're out there and uh, we had the, the drone in the air and then Derry spotted a whale and uh, just caught it, just diving, which was fantastic. I think we've got some good footage of that. And then one like one time it was going like that and it just nearly hit, like just almost skinned my dad's head, but he didn't see it, which was good. Like when we came onto the boat, I thought, we we're going to see whales so many times. And then as we were getting later on into like Tahiti, I thought, we've been on the boat for five years, we're never going to see them. And now we're in Maria, we're seeing so many per day and, and they actually are us, like speaking to each other and I find that really fascinating. The visibility today isn't fantastic, so we didn't actually see the whales in the water but you can hear them, it's just so clear, this sort of mournful, eerie sound. The whales are really cool and they're like massive and they're so calm, they don't look like they're going to harm anything. So stay tuned for more adventures as we sail around the world. If you want to find out how to fix your boat, go to our Mothership Maintenance channel and if you've got any questions you want to ask us, join our Patreon family.